Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine. I'm a student at Cal State University of Long Beach. I'm currently in my junior year. And today we have Sam Waddles, who is finishing up his degree online at CSU Online. So welcome, Sam. Hi, thanks for having me. So did you start off going to college online or is that something that came later to you um, in your college career? Um, it actually came later. I, I started uh, my second year in college online. I initially went to University of Colorado at Boulder. Uh, oh, okay. And then for various reasons, I switched over to an online program. Oh, okay. So, so how did you pick uh, Boulder? Um, I mean, the obvious reasons are skiing and rock climbing and the yeah. various outdoors activities there. And I, I, um, I was on my college tour with my dad and Boulder was the closest school to home I picked. Everything oh. else is on the East Coast. I'm from Los Angeles. And that was really important to you, staying close to home? No, it was, it was the least important thing to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everything I wanted was either in Boston or New York. Um, and I, I was on my college tour and we, we stopped at Boulder and I just canceled the rest of the tour once we got there because it was so beautiful. Wow. And the tour went so well. Um, yeah, I think a lot of reasons I picked it. Also, I was studying environmental science when I went there and they had one of the best uh, environmental science programs at the time. Okay. Uh, so that was obviously important for me. Okay, so uh, did you ever go to the Career Services Center over there and what was that experience like and how did it help you? Um, I did go to the Career Service Center. I don't want to uh, talk poorly about the school at all, but mm. if anything, it helped me less. Then. Oh, really? So I went there and I okay. asked to speak with an advisor and I got sent to a student who was no older than me working there. Mm. Um, and I, I was pretty, I knew, I knew various jobs that were in the field of environmental science when I went there. And I was just asking, you know, like, what kind of pay can I expect out of college for an introductory job? You know, what's my career path really looking like with this degree? And he pretty much answered everything that I Googled without any you know and, and then all the advisors were booked when i wanted to speak to you know a professional career advisor right so i was stuck with a student and a freshman in college just like me who uh, couldn't offer me much insight into that right so it sounds like you weren't really enjoying your path there and you know the path that you were on and your mm -hmm. major and so I, I assume that's when you started to take classes online. So why did you originally drop out? Um, I, I first dropped out just because I, I just thought the culture wasn't necessarily for me. I was in a fraternity and um, again, I'm not, I don't want to talk poorly about the fraternity or anything because it was a great experience, but it led me to realize who I am and who I want to be rather than who I think I should be. Right. Compared to other people, right? Right. Um, and that was really important to me was not to lose sight of who I wanted to be as right. I grew older. And I thought that um, the fraternity and everything that's associated with that was kind of swaying from that path. Mm. Um, that was really the breaking point for me when I decided to leave in my sophomore year. Um, and then I took, I don't know, maybe like an eighth month hiatus from school. And I, you know, I did like the classic, I backpacked around Europe by myself for a while and had a lot of fun and met a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was like, I really need to go back to school yeah. <laughs> and started looking at my options. And turns out online school is definitely the cheapest and that played a big factor in my decision. And uh, Uni uh, University of Colorado at Boulder made me take some classes that weren't going to be transferred universally, right? Yeah. So then I looked into Colorado State has a fully accredited online program mm -hmm. um, and they accepted all of my transfer credits. Oh, wow. Okay. So that, that was really the main factor in me choosing um, CSU over another online program. I see. So, so how difficult was it for you to leave and to take that huge step and um, how was it dealing with, um, you know, like maybe your family, were they supportive of your decision or was that something that you had to kind of just like do this for yourself and you had to just say, hey, I know what I'm doing and I just need you to trust me or how hard was that transition for you? Because I know a lot of people who want to make that leap that you did 
but they're just really afraid of, I guess, what other people think, honestly. Sure. Yeah, and, and there's definitely a stigma with it. And yeah. For that, for that eight months or however long it was before I went back to school, um, mm-hmm. even, if, even if other people weren't necessarily projecting that stigma onto me, I was projecting it onto myself. Right. Because, you know, in the back of my head, I was like, I know I should be in school. I know that I'm smart enough to be doing this. I feel like, I, you know, I like worked odd jobs and I felt like I was kind of getting stuck in a, in a cycle. But luckily my family, um, super supportive. My parents are great. And my brother dropped out of college too. Um, he's only two years older than me. He dropped out um, about a year and a half before I did. Oh, okay. Um, and I think that maybe in the back of my head kind of gave me some more confidence to do it because he dropped out for various reasons different than mine. Right. Um, and my parents were super supportive of it. Right. And it made you feel better to have someone in your family that already did that. So he mm-hmm. kind of like gave you an example. That yeah. makes you kind of like your inspiration in that sense, right? Yeah, I think, I think in the back of my head it was definitely there. But um, if I was to offer any advice to kids who were, were thinking about dropping out, um, I think something I have, a, I have a really big problem with is being selfish. Mm. And I think yeah, it's that's really, a good really one. It's hard for me to put myself before others. And this is one of those things where you just really need to take a step back and realize what's important for yourself mm. or mental health or finance or whatever it may be. And you just have to disregard what other people think for a while. Right. That, so, and that's, yeah. that's really important advice because there are a lot of students out there who feel that um, other people are relying on them and they don't want to disappoint their parents. For example, first generation students who are going to college, like I feel like that's something really um, huge for them, you know, to not let down their parents, to not let down their family because they made so many sacrifices for them. So that's really great advice. Thank you for that. Yeah. So um, now you're doing something different. So kind of tell everyone, um, how did you get into flying? So, uh, I actually used to be, I don't know if scared is the right word for of flying, but I was, I was definitely a nervous flyer. Oh, okay. Um, even up until when I started flight training, I was a nervous flyer. L- you know, little bumps and stuff, I would hold on a little tighter than anyone else around me, right? Um, and my, one of my really good friends growing up is a corporate pilot. So he flies those fancy corporate jets with business executives around. Um, and he also owns a small plane and he took me up in a small plane and it literally blew my mind so much so that when I got off the plane, I uh, signed up for flight lessons. The very wow. next day. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, Talk about impact. Yeah, it was, it was really, it was really something. So now I have, I have my private pilot's license and I'm working on some other certificates with it. Um, private, that's basically like the baseline license you can have. Mm-hmm. Um, and it took me, 352 days to get my license oh okay applying multiple times a week and tremendous amount of self-study um yeah and it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me i think flying is amazing and being in control of an aircraft and flying across states by yourself is the craziest thing in the world that sounds that sounds amazing not too many people get that experience so i'm i'm very happy for you Thank so did you, you do um, all of that while you were um, taking those online classes? Yeah, so that's actually why I am, I'm such a big fan of online classes is because, you know, it's allowed me to do something that, well, it ha- while it hasn't been a lifelong dream of mine since I started, it's been something that's definitely required a lot of focus, attention, and work. Right. I mean, obviously, you can't, you can't really put in half the work and expect to fly the plane. Um, yeah because then you crash and that's not very good. Right. But I think online school has given me like the freedom to be able to do it as well as um, time-wise and also the financial freedom because it is much more affordable. Yeah. You know, for student meal plans and tremendous student housing and, you know. Yeah. Most of my textbooks are online. Oh, okay. That's really great because um, I feel like I'm sure growing up, that wasn't something that you ever saw in your college career. Am I correct? Taking yeah. online classes, right? 
Yeah, but um, that's just something that kind of came about to you as you learned more about yourself and kind of discovered what you wanted to do. And at the time, it was what um, kind of fit into your schedule and um, what helped you uh, achieve what you wanted in life. So I think that's really important for everyone to kind of like learn from this and to say that it's okay, change is okay. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I, think change is, I think change is a really good thing. Right. In fact, yeah. I you know, it, it builds character and you should expose yourself to as many life situations as you can, both good and bad, because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not learning from everything. Right. What's the point? Uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering how, how much harder are online classes, if they're even harder, or it, how different are they? Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, so I think, I think it differs school to school a lot, which is part of the reason why I think there's still, like, not everyone's totally on board with online classes. Yeah. Um, but at Colorado State University, the, I actually found most of my online courses more challenging than uh, courses I was taking at Boulder. Mm, okay. Um, and me personally, I mean, again, it's such a personal thing. I'm more, I love being challenged and I love being the one to challenge myself. Mm -hmm. I don't work so well when someone else is challenging me. I see. Right. Okay, so, that makes sense. And that's, that, that coincides also with flying because there's two, there's two schools of thought for getting your pilot's license where you can do um, part 141 or part 61. Essentially, it's through a flight school or self-paced um, with an instructor. And I did the self-paced. Oh, okay. I see. So there are options within online courses as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, oh. And I think like, yeah, I don't know. It's so much more written based right because they're not really giving you like a final that's multiple choice because it's online they don't know you're not going to go to you know sometimes you have to go to a test center for some things but okay there's no one in the room with you right, right, you're right. So a lot of it's written based and i think um it has helped my writing skills tremendously yeah and, yeah. and i switched i switched over to marketing as my major when i went to online schools Oh, okay. Because I always wanted to go to business school, but I thought, um, oh, I'll just get my MBA when I finish my undergraduate. Mm -hmm. um, so, but anyway, I switched over to marketing and business. And writing is obviously a really important skill to have in that field. Yeah. And I've never been a better writer, and I've never been able to flow so well when I'm writing a paper as I have in online school. Okay. Okay, that's amazing. So now I kind of want to talk about associations. Sure. So um, when did you first hear about associations and do you currently belong to any right now? Sure, yeah. Um, I think I've, no I've known about associations for, I don't know, since forever. My, mom, my mom's big into associations. She's on the board for the National Tai Chi Association and a bunch of other stuff. Oh, wow. Um, so I've always been around it, but me personally, I didn't actually join any associations until I started flying. Um, mm, okay. One of which is the AOPA Association, which is Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, which is the main one that um, pilots are part of. They give you free membership if you're a student pilot while you're still training. Um, they host like safety seminars and send you magazines and even provide legal help if you, you know, God forbid, crash a plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it's very, and the community around it is very strong. And I'm also part of the Experimental Aircraft Association, which is uh, the EAA. So those are people who build airplanes in their garage and then uh, go fly them. Oh, wow. That's so cool. I, I don't do that, but. Oh, that's so cool. So those, those sound very exclusive. Is it the, are they very small or? Um, um, they're actually, they're very large. Oh, wow. Okay. I couldn't, I couldn't give you an exact number, but every pilot I know is in the AOPA. Okay. Um, and EAA hosts this, uh, I guess it's like a festival called Oshkosh in Wisconsin every year, or mm -hmm. called Air Venture, and, you know, hundreds of thousands of people travel around the world to go to it. Oh, wow. Okay. So great place to meet all sorts of people who like to do what you like to do, right? Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a tremendous help in both in my training and, uh, and becoming a safe pilot. Right. So Sam, what are your next steps 
um, as of today, what are the plans you have for the future and et cetera? Well, uh, hopefully, well, I will be graduating in three and a half weeks. Or four oh, weeks. really? Congratulations. Yeah. That's amazing. Pretty excited to be done with my undergraduate. Still, I still do plan to get my MBA, but I think I need to get a little more work experience under my belt, obviously make a little more money. Right. And, uh, maybe go to USC for their business school. Oh, great. Um, but more immediately than graduate school is, uh, I think I'm moving up to Seattle in about two months. Wow. Um, yeah, there's a big aviation community up there. There's Boeing. There's a lot of job opportunities, both in aviation and tech. There's um, tons, and it's beautiful up there too. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just gonna graduate and get a new job and see see where it goes because I really just love traveling and I want to live somewhere else for a while. And that's great. I think Seattle would be a great option. So, so what would you what would you like to do in the future if you had? So, I've always I've always like had this dream of being like the CMO of some Fortune 500 company or something like that. And it might happen. It might happen. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, it might happen. your way. But uh, now, now I'm really keen on this whole airplane thing. And while I don't want to fly professionally, I would love to sell airplanes or work in marketing for an aircraft company. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. And I think it's actually, it's, it's such a niche market to get into, but I think through these associations, I've been able to meet the connections that might actually help me enter into the market and get an actual feasible job. Yeah. Well, best of luck to you. Thank that you. sounds amazing. Thank and you're you. on a great path, you know, you. I'm glad you've done that. everything, you know, for yourself and just do what makes you happy. Yeah. And so uh, last piece of advice before we kind of um, end this interview here to people out there who are kind of unsure about what they want to do, what would you suggest to them um, about how to explore further careers or other career options? How could they do that? Mm -hmm. I think the root of it is just to be social. And mm -hmm. I, I know that's easier for some people than others, but I think if you are curious about careers and you're curious about life paths or hobbies or anything, the best way to go about it is just to meet people who are into it. And right. you know, go, go to seminars, go to shows, go to whatever falls in line with something you're interested in. And just, you know, put yourself out there and introduce yourself to someone and you think like, maybe you'll never see them again, and, but then also at the same time, maybe this like beautiful relationship will blossom and they'll become a mentor for you and hook yeah. you up an amazing job later down the road, which, which actually has happened to me before. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think putting yourself out there is half the battle. Yeah. Right. And the other half is just showing up. So, yeah. Great advice. Great yeah. advice. I love it. Yeah, be relentless and always put yourself out there and take those opportunities because if you don't, someone else will. That's what mm -hmm. I like to say because it's true, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think, especially to students out there, my, my biggest piece of advice is like, you just have to embrace the hustle, right? There's, mm. yeah. if you, if you want to sell something, like if you want to be a salesman, learn how to sell whatever you, you have, right? Like work on a car lot selling cars, do, do whatever you can. And, and I think there's nothing, there's no job that I view is beneath me. Yeah. And I think, you know, I've worked in a pizza shop and I've also, you know, worked doing distribution sales. Yeah. And I think, I would choose either of those jobs again any day because I learned so much from both. That's such a great mentality. And I, yeah, I think you just have to build the most eclectic background you can. Yeah, right? yeah, most definitely. And, and I think now, work for free. yeah, totally. You know, like I think now, yeah, exactly. And now, like, I think, especially with people our age, there's this whole thing where, like, we're exposed to so much that we think we're so much better than a lot of things. Oh yeah. And I, I have so many friends who would be like, oh, I'd never take that job. Or, I would never work for that little amount of money or something. And I, which I understand if you actually have to support a whole family or whatever it may be. And mm -hmm. At that point you do have to make a certain amount of money, but at the same time, I think for younger kids, you should never think yourself as better than the next guy. 
Right. right. Don't think of yourself as better than anyone. Just think of yourself as what can separate you from them. Yeah, exactly. Like what, what skills do you have that they don't that are going to get you this job? Yeah. And how do you improve on those skills that you have? And it also doesn't matter what job you're doing. Um, I got this piece of advice from someone and it actually like, I really loved it. And they're saying how, if your job is to get coffee, then just get coffee the best way you could possibly get it. And you will stand, you will stand out, you know, just do the best you can at getting coffee and someone will notice you. I'm a big you know? fan of that. Yeah. 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 I love that. That's really important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, I think, I think, everyone needs to, especially kids our age who are interested in whatever career path, they need to understand that you have to pay your dues, but while you're paying your dues, there's no reason for it to suck, right? You should embrace the suck and be like, okay, how can I make this the best possible experience for me? Yeah. And for my employer, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you're going to work your way up. Yeah. And one opportunity leads to so many others i can't tell you that enough like it's so true right i'm sure you could vouch for that yeah building building a network is something i think that's tossed around a lot and a lot of people just use buzzwords around it but it is absolutely the most important thing you can do right okay well thank you so much sam for being here today this was such a lovely time talking to you and i'm sure you're helping so many people out there and good luck with your future career Good luck to you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.